Okay, then I think we're ready to begin. There's no public uh, notice necessary to read because this is a continuation. So why don't you pick up where we left off? Bill, you want me to take this? Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair, members of the board. For the record, Tom Reedy, an attorney with Bacon Wilson out of Amherst, here on behalf of the applicant Green Jeans Farms. Uh, for its application for a special permit for the siting of uh, indoor cultivation in uh, existing greenhouses um, on Christian Lane in Waitley with me this evening, Julie Beauchemin. Um, and I don't know if our engineer, Julie, if, if uh, Mike is here. I don't see, I don't have the whole list in front of me. Uh, so yes. Mike Novak from Patriot Engineering is with us as well. Uh, so last we were here was November 4th. Uh, we left, you know, we had, a, I think, a very productive discussion. Uh, we left with some homework. Um, and prior to this meeting, I know Julie had sent along to the chair um, our homework. And so we had an updated site plan that I'll have Julie walk you through in a moment. Um, we've, we've got a narrative addressing just the timing of those greenhouses. I know there was some discussion about the existence of the greenhouses and then their damage and they haven't been reconstructed yet. Um, but we have provided some reasoning behind that and some uh, reference to some um, really a joint directive from the Executive Office of Energy and Department of Housing and Community Development. And then we've got uh, a narrative and really a schematic of what we intend to do not to use. If you'll recall, we were going to stay out of the 50 foot setbacks from the property lines. Uh, and, and we are showing what we're proposing so we can use just really the internal portion of the greenhouses. Um, and then we also, I know there was a discussion and I know the, the planning board I think had penned a letter talking about um, the fence being part of the use, access being part of the use. And so we just called to attention uh, that the zoning board had previously allowed fences, which I think is the right way to do it, frankly, and obviously access um, is the right way to do it, to allow those to exist within the 50 feet. So not to have to be 50 feet and then eat away further. And then also Julie had a conversation with the fire chief to get his requirements for what the site should look like to allow for appropriate emergency vehicle circulation. And so that's reflected in the updated site plan. You'll see that, as Julie will show you, we, we brought in the fence, the fences were on the property line, we brought them in. Um, and then we've on the right side, as you'll see, you've got that fire access lane uh, inside of the fence. So Julie, I don't know if without more, maybe you wanna walk them through the site plan and maybe um, the, the fences inside the greenhouses to show how we're going to kind of keep the cultivation where it needs to be. Sure. Yeah, I can go ahead and share my screen. It says it's disabled for me right now. I just um, made you a co-host, oh, Julie. Thank you. All right. Can everyone see this site plan? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So yes, as Tom discussed, um, we did make significant changes to this plan. Um, with our variance application, we had proposed six greenhouses in total. We've reduced that down to five greenhouses. And what we did is um, we had had this greenhouse number four way outside of the area it is now on the left side at the top here. Uh, we decided we wanna move that in to the center so that it's within uh, or it's outside of the side setbacks. Then we have a new greenhouse here, number five. Um, and so with it trying to stay, keep the use in, you know, outside of the side setbacks, we did eliminate uh, 4,400 square feet of cultivation use. And so the way that we're doing that or we're proposing to do that is to put uh, a chain link metal fence inside the greenhouses to really create a physical barrier um, so that no plants or any cultivation use would occur um, outside of those 50 foot side setbacks. And then the other changes we made um, besides pulling the fence in 
is uh, there was a, a planning board member that had made a comment about snow removal. So we really took another look at that to make sure that um, this is going to be reasonable for removing snow. So we reduced down the size of this metal barn to create more space in between the existing barn and in between uh, this greenhouse here so that we can uh, remove snow. And on the right side, uh, like Tom had mentioned, we brought this fence in, but we still have 15 feet of space between the fence and the edge of this greenhouse to allow for emergency vehicles to come in. And on the westerly side here, the fence is flush up against the ends of the greenhouse. I don't know if you want to switch over just to show the the metal fence, just so the, the board and the public can see. Um, sure. Pretty self-explanatory, but probably good to show. Oh, okay. So here, where you can see I put a, an orange line, that's where the fence, and it would be a fence similar to this picture, um, just a sturdy chain link fence with a single gate would be placed inside the greenhouses where I show these orange lines. Um, so there would be really two entrances there, one at the end of the greenhouse. This would be open space that would remain open. And then the fence here with another gate to come in where plants would be located. So Julie, how, Julie, how much, ahead. how much space are you reducing each greenhouse by with the chain link block offs? Um, I don't have the calculations for each one, Bob. I apologize, but okay. um, I think in total it would be two thousand square feet. All these gray. And entry into the <clears throat> active growing area will be through that chain link barrier. Correct, correct. And that's actually gonna be within part of the existing greenhouse so that it's not, that won't be destroyed. Yes, okay. the, the purpose is to not cause the landowner any hardship having to uh, shorten the greenhouses. It is a lot of work. Um, to relocate, there's water and electric inside them currently. So it would be a big financial hardship for them to actually cut those down. How are you gonna secure the chain link fence to the sides of the greenhouse, which I assume are plastic? Yeah, they will just be secured in the ground, flush up oh. against the ends of the greenhouse. The sides, how are you gonna secure the sides? The sides are plastic. You're gonna put chain link fence against the plastic greenhouse, I guess, what you're saying? Yes. And above above the six foot fence is gonna be clearly open because the greenhouses are, are higher than six feet. I would imagine, I, I don't know. That's right. Okay. Now, Julie, does the area between the entrance to the greenhouse and the chain link fence, that, that area, um, the air inside of it will need to be part of the um, odor control um, workings? It will. So the, the fans, um, the exhaust fans on the outside of the greenhouse, the, the chain link will allow um, air to move freely throughout the entire greenhouse so that that odor elimination will be efficient. Okay. What, what is the location of the chain link fence? So you show it on a plan and you show the 50 feet to the, to the uh, offset to the greenhouse and you show 37 and a half feet to the existing greenhouse, but I don't see a dimension to the fence. Your chain link fence, where is that going to be in relation to the 
to the boundary, either the greenhouse or the property line. Yeah, it's shown where this orange line is. So we've grayed out the ends of the greenhouse to show that there's not going to be a use there. But, um, but the fence, you're, where's the, what's the, what's the dimension of the fence be, from the, uh, the fence to the, to the property line? How far yep. away is it? So for, so for each end, it'd be 50 feet minus this. Can you see my cursor or no? But that, no, that's only the greenhouse, the existing greenhouse. Your fence is within that 39 feet. Where? No. Oh, I'm sorry, right here. Where's the dimension? No, that's to the existing greenhouses, the 37 feet, 39 feet to the greenhouses. Where is the dimension to the, to the chain link fence? Um, Mike, do we show it? On... I, don't, I don't know that it appears, but I don't know that it, besides, you know, I, there's no regulation relative to distance, at least in this instance, because of the, how far off the property line that it is to the okay. fence. We can certainly get that detail on there, but, um, you know, I don't, I don't know how that is determinative here. Well, it, it, it seems the fence is, is an arbitrary location without any dimensions on a plan. No, the, the fence is 15 feet from the end of the greenhouse purposefully per what the fire chief had requested. But Fred, if you'd like us, you either if you're inclined to approve this this evening with a condition that we provide you with uh, an updated plan showing the distance off of the property lines to the fence, if you're happy with where the fence is located, which I would probably suggest you should be because it, it seems to in, uh, enclose what it needs to enclose without more. So I don't know that it can be smushed anymore, but just for the record, we can certainly provide um, an updated plan you know, prior to the issuance of a building permit, which shows exactly where that fence will be. Uh I would leave that up to the other members. I guess I'm going to recuse myself from voting because I'm in a butter. So that's my concern. So, Mr. Chairman, can I ask a question, please? Yes. My question is on the term of use because I don't know exactly where the exhaust fans are going to be. Use would seem to be the overall program that is that is undergoing. So if they're using the end of the greenhouse to come in and then go through a gate inside it and then have exhaust fans outside of those chain link fence on either end to duct exhaust of heat and whatnot, would that not constitute use? Or don't I understand the term use in this situation? Here I would, Mr. Chair, if I could, I would suggest this is similar to, to access here. I mean, the, the board has already ruled in other cases that have been before them, because you could take this all the way back to when somebody leaves their house to go to this place, is, is, is that use? And obviously, when somebody enters the site, if there's a setback requirement like there is here, and you say it's 50 feet, well, how, are you else, how else are you gonna get to site? Lift up, go over, and then drop into the 50 feet. Obviously, that, that can't be um, what is intended here. Here, we're, we're talking about the cultivation of the can and, and the, really the canopy. And so we would suggest that by limiting the growing area of where the, the growing medium, the cannabis, the canopy of the cannabis exist is outside of that 50 feet. And, and that would be sufficient. Mr. Chair? Yes. May I ask a question? Yes. Or a comment? Sure. It seems to me that the applicants are defining cultivation quite narrowly in terms of just where the plants are, as opposed to the whole environment that's necessary for the growing system. I mean, they've already indicated that there's pipes and wiring in those areas that are necessary the, the cutoff areas that are necessary for the process. And obviously in terms of the way our bylaws are written and, and the state regulations, the odor control is necessary. 
and those exist outside these areas. So I'm, I guess it's a, a different way of asking what Michael asked. Uh, aren't, I think cultivation is something broader than just where the physical plants are. You, in, a, in a field, you would look at the irrigation pipes and where they are and that kind of thing as well. Julie, can I ask you where the water's coming for this? Is it, sure. what it, is it public it, water? No, it's private well water and okay. it's coming right where this blue line is. That's where it okay. exists. Okay. But I think, so, but taking Judy's definition, you know, again, there has to be a line drawn somewhere and, and water is going to come from somewhere. And so I don't know that every time the zoning board is faced with a use, if they say, well, where, do the, where does this sewer go? Where does, the, where does the water go? Where does the septic pipe lead? Because you can follow that thread all the way back as, as far as you want to go. There has to be some line in the sand. And we're suggesting that based on Zoning Board of Appeals past practice, um, and really what makes sense here, it's, it's the, the actual canopy of the flower, which is what's going to, what should be considered cultivation. Not, uh, not, nothing ancillary to that. Well, it, if you look on page 91, there's a definition for indoor marijuana cultivation that says the growing of marijuana inside any greenhouse or other fully enclosed structure and any subsequent drying of marijuana in such a facility. Pretty clear. What was that again, Bob? Uh, on page 91 of the um, bylaws. Yep, I'm on it. Yep. There's a definition. This the first definition on page 91, indoor marijuana cultivation. And it says the growing of marijuana inside any greenhouse or other fully enclosed structure. And any subsequent drying in such a facility. So I, I think cultivation means the growing of the marijuana inside the greenhouse. That's page 91 of the new book, Roger. Uh, I'm looking at the old book. Yes, yeah. and I have the old book too, Bob. Okay, I, I don't have my old book. So but I don't I'm know on, it's, it's close, but I'm just not seeing the indoor. Maybe that's a new term. Maybe that's what I'm wondering if that is a new term. Because okay. let me just ask you a question, Bob, um, very yep. quickly. Does this page that you're looking at also have craft marijuana cultivator cooperative greenhouse host community agreement? Yes. And okay. So after host community agreement, the next one is indoor marijuana cultivation. So perhaps it is new. It is new. It is, an, it is a new term. Okay. okay. You, would you mind reading that one more time, Bob, please? Sure. Uh, indoor marijuana cultivation, the growing of marijuana inside any greenhouse or other fully enclosed structure and any subsequent drying of marijuana in such a facility. Okay, thank you. Bob, could you give me the, the ID number of where that is? Just yeah, that's 171-28.6. That's under B definitions. Thanks. Sure. It was amended. Uh, okay, sorry, that's fine, sorry. Julie, I have another question. Sure. Um, in, this, in this section between the, uh, I guess the face of the greenhouse and where the chain link fence is gonna be, that area is going to be empty. Yes, correct? that's right, it will be empty. Okay, except perhaps for um, fan or duct work. Um, I don't think so. So the, the fan should be on the face or the wall of the greenhouse. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
So, so the entire greenhouse is going to be odor controlled, not just a growing area. All right. So if if that's true, then how can you say how can you define a growing area less than the the total dimension of the greenhouse? Because, because we're not grow we're we're not growing in yeah, that area of the greenhouse. All affects the entire greenhouse whether you you're growing plants there or not. You're, so you want the farmer to have to take down the ends of this greenhouse just to comply when we've come up with a perfectly suitable alternative? No, but we asked how are you going to do the partition, partition that off. You come up with a chain link fence. There's no chain link fence doesn't restrict odor or air movement. If you had a solid fence there, something more, more impermeable, maybe that would control odor better. The chain link fence isn't controlling anything. Uh, any, any odor. But if anything, I mean, wouldn't the board rather have additional area that isn't used for canopy so that the air could circulate? So if you take like a canopy to cubic foot ratio of the, the cannabis to how much air is around it, if you want to squish it down and then have us clean it, we can probably figure out a way to do that. Or you have more air and so it's already dissipated a bit within the greenhouse itself as it's cleaning. It just seems to make more sense that way. So where, where is your odor control plan? I don't remember seeing it on this submittal. Was it submitted earlier? Was there an odor control plan? Yes, the, there was a, there was um, a sheet that talked about the actual solution. And then there, there should have also been a, a description of the odor control, which is a ring that will go on the outside of the exhaust fans. Hey, I'm looking at the uh, special permit that we granted approximately three years ago to the uh, prior petitioner, and it references a plan that was submitted at that time, but I don't see the actual plan. Um, it was actually called figure 14. Does anybody have that figure 14? I'm just curious how the, how the greenhouses were configured back then when we approved it. The way I remember it is that the applicant agreed to rotate the greenhouses so that they were perpendicular to Christian Lane. Has this applicant considered that possibility? We have, but our greenhouses in that area are currently designed to be inside the 50 foot. So it's, we've done the same thing. It's just a different configuration. So we've they actually- rotated, They rotated the existing greenhouse. Right, so we are proposing to move this existing greenhouse that's shown here on the left into, so that it's not outside of the setbacks. No, I think that Judy is referring to actually rotating them so that the exhaust does not go right onto Christian Lane, but or within the setback entirely. The rotating the first, the ones to the west of the prop to the south of the property. I don't know if you have them numbered. Um, Yes, greenhouse. Are you referring to greenhouse three and two, Judy? I, I'm sorry, I can't see it on my, okay. it's, it's, I've got this little iPad, but um, let me check. Okay, number two that you're referring to. Yeah, two, two and three are the only existing ones that aren't being altered. Yeah, the two, the two with the 
the gates. Right. I believe, uh, you know, there were so many plans at that time, but it, the one I know that we looked at was on the planning board finally had those rotated. Julie, do you have that, remember that green image that you showed? That's figure 14. Yep, I do. If you, can so if you have that second. just to bring it up, that might help here. Yeah. There you go. Can everyone see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Maybe if so, you back out just to show them the upper left corner, so it says, or however you want to do it. So figure 14, as the chairman had mentioned. So this is the only plan that I could find at, with the town clerk. And you can see that these greenhouses are not rotated. This is how they exist. Okay. Well, it must be the one that the planning board looked at for the site plan then. <clears throat> but hold on. The, the actual language in addendum A said and was, these were five conditions. First condition was greenhouses must conform to figure 14 on the undated approved plan submitted at the December 6, 2018 meeting, title figure 14, Urban Grown Inc. Hupkowski Long Plain Farm site plan amended, which amends the stamp plan <laughs> entitled plan of land in Waitley Mass surveyed for Scott and Wayne Pitowski dated November 19, 2018. Well, that sounds like this is the one, okay. Because this says site plan amended. Um, so Roger, think, you're just reading from the decision conditions for the urban grown special permit? Exactly. Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, but I guess I can't tell from this what they were doing uh, or what does that green represent? Were they going to slice them down? Or I don't remember discussion of a barricade back then. I think the red line is the 50 foot offset. Yeah, the red line is the fence that was approved. But it does say fence. down here in the legend, these are shortened and relocated greenhouses within the surveyed 50 feet, 50 foot setback envelope. All right, so there was a <clears throat> proposal to shorten them in some way. Yes, yes. Okay. But like you, Roger, I don't remember what they were going to do unless maybe they were, were they gonna be putting up plastic sheeting to prevent anything encroaching beyond that? I don't remember either. Yeah, I, I just I just know that they had said they would keep them to this shortened dimension. I don't think we got to that level of detail before they withdrew their proposal, I think. That could be, that could be. I mean, but wasn't this approved? I yeah, mean, it was, was approved. reading from a, was, an approved decision, no, so. There was no withdrawal, it was approved. Right. It was okay. approved, okay. it was approved. Oh God. There's no question it was approved. Uh, the question is, how are they going to be shortening them? I think they were physically going to shorten them. Yes. However, you physically shorten a greenhouse. Well, you cut down the ribs. It's it's not that it, these are hoop houses. It's not a from from the especially difficult process from the exterior. So to, so to put the to, if I could frame the issue as I'm hearing it, it's evolving and the. Shortening back then apparently was a physical external shortening and the shortening, if you will, that this applicant is proposing to do is an internal shortening of some sort and the, the chain link fence is the mechanism to accomplish that with both recognizing the 50 foot um, setback as a, as a requirement. Have I framed that fairly accurately? Um, yeah, and I think that from what we understand, I think the discussion was about um, plastic on the interior during your last, at least what we've heard from the landowner, that the shortening would have been accomplished by internal, um, the erection of internal plastic to actually shorten that way. Sorry.
which if, if that's what the board would like, then, you know, we just thought for a couple of different reasons that the, the chain link was better. Um, but if some sort of solid, I mean, we're, we can, we can do that. If that's true, I'm sorry, but if the red line is the security fence, there's no way to get around those those greenhouses if if the if the structure remains the way it is in this drawing. Maybe I'm misunderstanding something. This drawing is also not to scale, so it's a little difficult to understand what the the distances are. Yes, but when the structure goes beyond the security fence, it's clearly not. The scale well, is. The, looking at the legend again at the bottom, Judy, the red dotted line says security fencing hyphen 15 feet from ends of shortened and relocated greenhouses. Yes. So what we're seeing on the screen is the black outline of the existing greenhouses, but they were going to be removed, apparently. Yeah, well, that was that was my point, that the they red, would be removed. Red line. They would have to be removed to function. Yeah. yeah, so you would be able to walk around the perimeter of the newly shortened greenhouses. If that's yeah. I'm reading it. That was, that was what I was trying to say. Thank you. Okay, so I think we understand that. So I'm sure there's plenty of other things you want to talk about. So why don't you keep going with your presentation? And so I guess um, besides that, you know, we had submitted that uh, the memo relative to the reconstruction of the greenhouses, um, what your bylaw says as far as the, the application in the AR1, the AR2 seems not to be of, of uh, import here because there's th these would be, you know, essentially any sort of building, um, not necessarily just greenhouses, would be allowed for cultivation in the AR2. So I think we're really just talking about the AR1. And there are two greenhouses. There were two greenhouses there um, in existence since 2000 or 2001 that because of some snow damage came down, I think it's December 22nd, 2018. And so you know, we took a look at your bylaw. We saw that the bylaw says was in existence, which we understand, right? You didn't want somebody subsequent to that bylaws enactment coming and saying, well, we're gonna, under the guise of 40A section three, you know, you can't unreasonably regulate or prohibit uh, agriculture. We're gonna put up a greenhouse and then we're gonna all of a sudden convert it to indoor cultivation which really didn't seem to be what the purpose or intent of the bylaw was. So we said, okay, these, these greenhouses were in existence since 2000, were in existence on April 24th, 2018. And then December 22nd, 2018, they come down uh, thereabouts. And that would, in our opinion, cause them to be pre-existing non-conforming structures because they could not have been Subsequent to April 24, 2018, they could not have been constructed and then used for indoor cultivation. But here they're grandfathered. And so you've got a provision of your bylaw, which is typical, um, where you have two years to, I think it's uh, substantially complete, the rebuild of something that was damaged. And so what we've done then is we, we took a step back and, and we liken this to between um, in 2010 and 2012, there was this permit extension act, which I don't know if anybody was familiar with, but it was part of the jobs act um, when we hit the recession in 2008, which effectively told for ultimately four years, any approvals that were in existence during that time. And so understanding that that had existed and how that was implemented. And now because of COVID, there was a state of emergency that was declared March 10th, 2020 um, until June 15th, 2021, such that similarly to the Permit Extension Act, any approvals, any, any rights that you had during that time to act were effectively told because of the pandemic. 
And I think really just the, the governor in this instance, the legislature back in 2010, which said it's not fair to require people to have to act or to lose some right during this time, then um, recession, now COVID. And so with that, there has been some, there was some guidance, uh, Energy Environmental Affairs and uh, Housing and Economic Development put out so a FAQ joint guidance that said, and here's how you calculate it. So there's an order that says approvals, this, you know, approvals and rights are told, and then here's how you calculate it. So then we went through and said, okay, if it came down on December 22nd, 2018, they had until December 22nd, 2020 to reconstruct it. However, March 10th was that state of emergency. And so they suggest how you calculate. And, and if that state of emergency didn't intercede, then we probably wouldn't be having this conversation, but it did. And so what you do is you take the time that it had existed um, between the beginning of the state of the emergency and when we would have otherwise had to act, which in our case was 287 days. And you put that onto the end of the state of emergency. So you take June 15th, add 287 days, and you get to March 29th of 2022. And so with that, our position is that the board, first of all, can entertain this. And second of all, could condition and probably should condition that the greenhouses, um, or the area of the greenhouses which were taken down uh, because of the storm damage can be reconstructed provided that they are substantially complete by March 29th, 2022. And, and so that's, I think, really where we come from here, looking at what the law is, what your bylaw provides, and really just the facts of, of what happened. Excuse me, could, could you just tell me again uh, what the source of the plan for how to handle this is, is called, who, who came up with this? Uh, yeah, so there's, and it's in the memo. I don't know if you got a copy of the memo. Well, I, I do, but I can't see it right now. Okay, no, no problem. So there's, there's COVID-19 order number 42, which okay. Governor Baker is the one who declared the state of emergency and then issued an executive order, which is the one I just let you know which told those permits, approvals, and actions. And then we also relied upon the uh, EOEEA, so the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs and Executive Office of Housing and Economic Development. Okay, as, as long as I can see that it's all in there, I'll be okay. Yeah, it's all, it's all in there. <laughs> Thank you. So that, that's what we relied on. And then we just, and we can provide the website if anybody's interested in, in seeing it because it's a PDF FAQ. <laughs> Question, Tom. Um, so, reconstructed greenhouse um, is not greenhouse number two, not greenhouse number three. Yeah, just go there to yeah. Okay. So it would be greenhouse number one that would be the newly constructed one. Or Correct. The, okay. The, the now, substitution, we'll say. The substitute. Okay. Now, uh, is the substitution going to be within the 50 foot setback as constructed? Yes. So there, there won't be one of those chain link barrier things necessary. Correct. So we're, we're really talking about the chain link existing only on two and three, correct? No, there's chain link on one. And, and the easterly side of one. On the easterly side of one, okay. Because what we're doing is we're we're connecting and and Julie, correct me if I'm wrong here, but we're what we're doing is effectively adding to the square footage of that existing like box like greenhouse. There, we're just building off of that to where you see proposed greenhouse one. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman. Yes. I have a question on that all that he had just explained about being able to build that greenhouse and everything else would that have to stay within the original footprint of the structure that was there and not to be expanded upon that would because be my, then that would be my understanding of it because if they're adding more to it or doing something and lengthening it and it looks wider than the other two that are there what was the width of the original? 
hoop house that was there. And the we're length. actually reducing the, the square footage from what was previously there. But if it doesn't exist now, then you really don't need to build out the section with the chain link fence because if it's not fully completed, you can stop it short of where it needs to be and make a solid end wall in it. Would that not be? That's the proposed, so proposed greenhouse number one. If you look at it as you travel west, we won't be going beyond. So that's what that exists. And then that, if you can see where the diagonal light blue that the cursor is on right now, that is what's going to be added. Now that looks odd from what I can see on the ground from hoops from my backyard behind that area now. There's, there's... I'm confused. Oh, I see. No, and, this... and it seems if that greenhouse was was damaged in a storm, it was more than just that little area you're talking about. It was they, as, as long as the, the other greenhouses two and three. Here's... Yeah, it's it's what was damaged Here's... was larger Here's... than what we are looking to reconstruct. All well, the cars parked. Excuse me. So is this an existing building out there right now? Number one. There are hoops there now. One set of hoops where the metal barn is. Okay. So the metal hoops are going to be moved because the metal hoops right now are where you're proposing to put a metal barn. Correct. Is that correct? And then there's a blank space. And then there's a short existing greenhouse where they have six to eight vehicles parked. Yes. So that's on the property. A greenhouse. Is that, that is, is that proposed greenhouse number one? Yes. Except. Um, okay. So it's the length of two vehicles that you're building out just about. That's right. And you're going to take down the hoop house that has no plastic on it entirely. That uh, is where your metal barn is going to go. Right? Yes. Okay. That's this, this, and then an internal. Roger? Yeah. Uh, Roger, I think we might need to go out here again and take a look. You know, I, I was just thinking the exact same thing. Yeah, I agree. So then what, so we can continue to move it along. What do you need from us out in the field? Um, what other questions do you have about the instant application in front of you? What other information can we provide to you? Yeah, those are all good questions. <laughs> so, when we go out in the field, labeling would be great. So we know which ones are one, two, and three. And I, so I guess it's a little bit complicated as the, the butter just talked about the hoops are over where the metal barn is supposed to be built. And so, I mean, is there anything to view right now at, at the location of proposed greenhouse one? Just the hoops. Oh, the hoops oh I'm there. sorry. To view is this 30 by 30 greenhouse. Okay. And Julie, we could probably put some stakes out there. Yeah. Do you think that, to show the corners of what? That would be a good idea. A, and show the 50 foot offset. So folks get a sense of inside the existing greenhouses, what we're looking to do, what that actually looks like. Yeah, okay. much staking and, and some labeling that you, that, that you do would be beneficial, I think, to everybody. Um, I'd be curious. Uh, just uh, when you do an on-site to explain how you would ventilate, because I thought you don't want to break that plastic barrier on the side, um, but you, if you're not going to be utilizing the ends for ventilation on those particular greenhouses, it means you're going to you're going to break that barrier on the side. Is that correct? I just can't envision it. That's all. 
I don't think we said that we'd do ventilation on the sides. I think we would do it on the ends where it exists because it's not part of the growing. Well, it, that then would become uh, <laughs> instrumental to the growing. So it would therefore be necessary for the cultivation. It becomes part of the cultivation because you just said without ventilating for heat and whatnot, then you wouldn't be able to cultivate. So wouldn't that become use then? I think you'd have to... I thought you had mentioned that you were going to ventilate out the side at one point. That's all. No. I think it would be useful then just to, if we did the site visit to, to see where, you, what you propose for the ventilation, you know, sort of tell us where it is so that we're not talking. I mean, I'm familiar with this property and obviously Mike and Gretchen are familiar and Fred because we live nearby, but um, I just think that we're, we're talking a lot of ideas here and we need to actually look at where things are going to happen. I really need to, to see this. Right. Up, up. You well, know, as long as we're talking about the view, this Saturday is not good for me. Um, and we usually do it on Saturday. The following Saturday, December 11th would be better for me. I'm fine with December 11th. I can do December 11th. What time? 11 11 okay yeah. December 11 at 11 you know one one option Julie that you could consider it's up to up to uh, you and the uh, landowners is since you're we're talking two greenhouses here that are going to have some chain link fences inside and you're building a new one to to rotate them to or, or put a somehow make them bigger and incorporate the proposed one and go in the same direction. You eliminate the, the need for a chain link fences inside. That's an expense for each one of them. You add that expense in there. What's the cost compared to rotating them and not putting in a chain link fence? And plus, I don't know the quality of the greenhouses, whether that would improve the quality, improve your, your, your odor control and all, if you could have newer or more modern or better uh, airtight greenhouses. Uh, I get that, I just, my, my comment to, for you to consider uh, on, on developing this site, whether you wanna go that route or not. Okay, thanks Fred. We have considered that. I mean, these greenhouses, if if they're not going to be used for marijuana, are going to continue to be used for for tobacco and, and other vegetables. So um, I'm trying to reduce the hardship on them as much as possible. So just to be clear, you are going to be um, tenants under a lease if the proposal is approved, and they will remain as the owners and will continue to do other farming there. Correct. Okay. I just have one other question, Julie. Sure. Um, where you propose the um, the north south oriented greenhouses, mm -hmm. um, if you could just scroll that down a little mm -hmm. bit, um, isn't part of that now a a swale that was created for runoff? It or is. is that Yep, you're and, right, Bob. So it was created by the landowners. It's, it's a ditch. Um, and so our engineer has designed this drainage area, 60 by four feet, to uh, replace to do that. that. Okay. So do what, that, do what that's doing, but better. Okay. <clears throat> um, just, just one thing. Um, Hannah, did uh, Judy want to share something? Or Judy, do you want to share something via Hannah? Hello. <laughs> Is Judy still there? Her screen looks blank. I'm wondering if we could check with her um, if she comes back to the call. Looks like she might have stepped away for a moment. Okay. No, I'm here. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. I'm muted. Did you want to share something? No, Deborah. I um, 
I asked Hannah to have some things ready because I just look on an iPad and I can't share, but the way the discussion went, it's not necessary. So thank okay. you for asking. Sure. Okay, Hi. so I actually want to study Tom's, Tom's memo and the math on it. I just, I didn't have a chance this week. I know it came into my inbox, but that's what I'll be doing between now and when we convene again. Um, so thank you for that memo. Hi, could I ask a question? This is Maureen Nichols on school committee. Yes. I'm just wondering if um, they could just give a, a brief talk about the odor control. We're just really worried about that at the school. Sure. So we had a, uh, our odor control consultant uh, present last time. He's not here tonight, but I can summarize it. So uh, we are currently, so this fence, we actually pulled this back farther away from the school, uh, but we are over, the greenhouse here is over 550 feet from the school. And so at each greenhouse end, Maureen, there will be a ring um, of a, a safe solution that will actually dissolve the odor that comes from the greenhouses. <coughs> and so that will run at times when there's odor expected. And, you know, we do not expect to, that the school from that property that you'll be able to smell. Um, what, what is a ring? I know the, the last people who talked about doing this were talking about a filter system. Mm -hmm. It's, I can share a picture with you afterwards. I don't have it up okay. right now, but. Okay, um, I'm sorry. I couldn't make it to the last meeting. That's okay. No worries. Um, it's a, it's a metal ring that sits outside of the exhaust fan and it has holes in it for this. It's a sprayer, basically. It's a big sprayer that occurs. What is it spraying? It's a iodine solution that it's called Canna Busters. You can Google it, they have a website. It's something that's being done across multiple greenhouses in Massachusetts um, and it is very effective. Is that safe to have in the air near a school? Yes. <coughs> Julie, what are the, oh, sorry. I was Julie, gonna say that makes me uncomfortable having something sprayed in the air near the school. I don't, I'll have to look this up to see what's in this. Okay. Maureen, I can also get you in touch with the representative from Canna Busters because he knows a lot more about it than I do. Okay. I would like that. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Julie, how are the flow rates going to be regulated against the fan? Because some of the greenhouse fans from individuals I know that have them, they have different speeds. So how mm -hmm. is that going to be set up? to disperse the proper amount of, quote, uh, pot buster to get, eliminate the smell uh, proportionally to the speed of the fan. And the presentation that your gentleman did, I would really like to see some of the uh, scientific data behind that in some of the uh, studies and whatnot that were done because I could not get a garner a lot of information from his speech other than that California has a problem with something about it. And he says, California doesn't know what they're doing. So I haven't been able to see any scientific data. And when the MSDA sheets show a lot of stuff not available or not known, especially to the health of animals and pets and things, it still makes me really gun shy because there hasn't been enough study to know what the harmful effects are. Okay, I think there are studies and I might have them, but he would have more of them. So that would I will be let him answer those questions. Yeah, that would be good to have him put up on the screen the results of those studies and who did them and when they took place and under what conditions. Okay.
I guess, Mr. Chair, we would just ask for any, like, these are great comments, um, but we would just ask for what other, uh, whatever other comments, you know, it sounded like Judy might have had something that whether she's refraining because it's now inapplicable or refraining because she wants to bring it up at a future time, we just want to try to get everything out so we can address them instead of coming back next time and then people saying, oh, what about this now? Um, and, and just looking to delay. So if, if there are additional comments, we would just ask for them uh, and let us do our some additional homework. Well, my, my comments were related to the letter that the planning board sent which you addressed earlier, okay. briefly. Thank you. Speaking of the planning board though, so is it true that there's no actual application in front of the planning board yet? Planning board yes. received. Sorry, Julie. I'm go sorry, ahead. Julie, nope. go ahead. The planning board received an application, but decided that we suspected that there would be significant changes to the plans and all our work is plan dependent. So we postponed having a public hearing until, until you folks had settled on, on, on a, or looked to be settling in on a plan. Um, we will, we have scheduled a briefing update for this plan for next Tuesday. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, Roger, I, I made this comment once or twice. Uh, I think it's important that it, if this does get approved, th this uh, use of this facility here, that we make some requirements for the odor control like we have on other projects. And I think it's at the end of this presentation, there's an attachment A and B or whatever that talks about submitting a plan of how you're going to control odor by a licensed professional and to report back within a year whether that's successful or not. I think something like that needs to be part of this. Uh, that would probably appease the school district there that they're not going to be uh, locked in forever for living with this if, if it doesn't turn out. I think something like that should be part of the, if we do make an approval on this, part of the approval process. Are you talking about one of the conditions that we uh, attached in 2018? No, it's it's the ones that we did on the River Road establishment. Oh, okay. Well, here's something that I've thought about, and I think Bob Smith may have thought about it and mentioned it in other uh, contexts, which is that <clears throat> under our rules and regulations, we do have the power to hire at the expense of the applicant an outside consultant to evaluate scientific and technical data that is beyond the, the skill level of our board to evaluate an odor control uh, <clears throat> techniques would certainly I think fall into that category. So um, I know other town boards use that mechanism more frequently and we have not, but, but I think we could. Um, so I don't know what your thoughts about that are, Bob, but I think maybe it's, it's time that we start to consider that. I, I, even before Bob said, I, I think that would be something that would be very important for us to do. Right. It was very helpful when we got outside consultant, uh, when we were doing quant quant for yep. another issue. Um, but that was very, very helpful to us. Um, so I think that, that that's perfectly appropriate. I think the planning board would agree. And also one uh, amendment that we made in the bylaws last June was that to clarify that we have the ability to monitor these projects on an ongoing basis after approval. Mm -hmm. At the yes, and, and I, I, I am imputing at all no ill intent to the petitioners, but the, the iodine solution used to control um, the odor, I too would like to see some studies about that. I mean, iodine in high concentrations is a very dangerous element. In low concentrations, it's not. And I don't think any of us on the board are 
we're not equipped to evaluate the level of that solution. There's also the, the issue of the water pollution in East Whateley. I assume the local water supply is used to, as a basis for this. I, I haven't heard the presentation, but so if you're spraying Pemec and whatever into the environment, that would not be so great. From my so, knowledge, are, are, are these fields actively farmed? They are. Okay, are they organic? They're not. Okay. So herbicides, that? pesticides, best agricultural management practices typically employed in the area, just yes. to give a background of what's already mm -hmm. happening on site. I mean, we live yep. in the Valley. I think folks know plenty of farmers and, and, and what they have to do to make sure that their crops can survive. So just not in the vacuum. We're not in, a, in an area where there's you know, nothing happening in, uh, in the environment already. Um, Julie, if, uh, has, the, has the water at the source that's gonna be used, has it been tested? It has. Okay, um, it'd be helpful. Okay, good, would be good to see that tested. Okay. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, um, Mary here. I'm just looking to back up a little. I have a blank in the, the minutes notes. Uh, when Mike Bechter was asking about uh, lack of studies and, and wanting more information, um, I think the last I heard was Julie was saying she would have somebody address that and people were talking about putting the information up on screens. It, it, it just fill in uh, the details on that for me. Who were we talking about somebody from Cannabusters or an, another person or? Yep, Mary, it's Derek from Cannabusters, Derek Stuckey, S-T-U-C-K-I. And he presented at the last zoning board meeting. Okay, so we're, we're talking about him hosting a place for people to go find it or him coming back or what was, what was said then? He would be happy to speak with people one-on-one -on -one if they want to provide their contact information and I will also ask him to join at the next meeting. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I have one other question on the iodine solution because the field to the west where you are, that is farmed organic and most other farmers in the area honor that by not spraying on windy days. How will your system account for that? And how far does the vapor travel once exhausted from the fans? I don't know that, Mike. Um, it depends on the, the fan speed and the winds that day and other factors. So I, again, I can have Derek answer that question. Yeah, because I think that would be pertinent for the uh, for the butters farming there, seeing they are organic and go chemical free. Mm -hmm. I also think that the, the for certification for organic um, land, there also the farmer who is going to farm organically has to provide a fifty foot buffer um, between commercial crops and organically grown, if I'm not mistaken. So um, sometimes you cannot farm from coast to coast, so to speak. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware, Mr. Smith, of the, uh, they have to provide a buffer as well, but I'm unaware of how far that would travel based on wind and, and whatnot, because the fan is oblivious to weather conditions to when it decides it wants to activate the system. Julie, I just want to let you know that Maureen has put her email address into the chat. Great. I will pass that along. Thank you, Maureen. All right, so the sixth is the uh, next scheduled meeting, first Thursday in the new year, actually. And uh, we don't have any other meetings scheduled that night. So we'll put, put you on again for 6.40 p.m. And unless there's any other comments or questions, we can adjourn and we'll see you on December 11th. Okay. Okay. 
Sounds good. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.